Okay, so welcome back to the fifth video in this watch kit tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to talk about the logic for your app and the life cycle of your app. Now, a life cycle of an app is sort of the process it goes through, through from being opened up or about to be opened up, any um, events that might happen like low memory or um, changing state while your app is running, and finally the closing down of your app once the user and the device is done with it. So, this life cycle of your app is handled over here in the WatchKit extension in the extension delegate. If you're an iOS developer, you'll probably you would have seen delegates beforehand because, of course, iOS apps have the app delegate. Just like an app delegate in an iOS app, the extension delegate handles lifetime events of your application. As you can see, there's three file, uh, there's three functions in here by default. The application did finish launching, the application did become active, and the application will resign active. So. The application did finish launching is called when your app has just been opened by the system. Remember, in WatchKit, it's an extension. So the user may not necessarily be opening our WatchKit app. It might just, the system might just be opening up a um, glance, a complication, or a dynamic notification. So of course, we're not handling any UI in this call. In here, we want to set up any properties for our app. So uh, like constants or if you have API keys to third-party libraries, this is where you'll set them up, just like you do in a what in the um, app delegate of an iOS app. The next thing is application did become active. This is called after your application has been running, it's been shut down, and it's been made active again. This is where you want to reset up anything. So if you have timers, if you have media, this is where you want to restart those timers, any ongoing task. Finally, you have application will resign active. This is where you want to pause anything that you started in did application did become active. So you want to pause your timers. You want to pause your ongoing tasks like web requests and um, so forth. So what else we have in our interface, in our extension is our interface controller. So this is, you'll notice, the thing that we were handling before in our interface. So, as you can see, interface controllers are each. Each interface controller is for a particular interface on our WatchKit, in our WatchKit app. So you may have many of these interface controller files. Of course, you should have them named appropriately for being in your WatchKit app. Next, we have our notification controller. This is what we use to set up our dynamic interface that I talked about in an earlier video. Uh, and I will cover properly in a later video. As you can see, there's a whole hub open functions and functions for handling the type of notifications you got, either local or APNS. Next up, we have our glance interface. Again, very similar to our other two interfaces. And as you can see, it's just, um, we'll wake with context. You set up your application here. Um, your glance view here with all the properties that it contains. The last controller that we have is our complication controller. So, like I said in an earlier video, complications are set up completely with logic, completely in code. Um, and hence, this is where we set them all up. Again, I'm not going to talk about how to set up complications in any of these earlier videos because they need an entire video to themselves, and that's what I'm going to give them. So that's the basics of the logic of your WatchKit app as it stands right now. Okay, so the next video in this series is going to talk about adding uh, navigation to your WatchKit app and the two types of navigation that WatchKit supports for apps.